Makihimanikea. Middle Length Sayings. Translated by I.B. Horner. S.U.T. Tacentral.net. Vidhavataka Sutta. 19 Discourse on the Twofold Thought Thus Have I Heard, At One Time the Lord Was Staying Near Savathya, In the Jita Grove in Anathapan.Ekas Monastery. While he was there the Lord addressed the monks, saying, Monks. Revered one, these monks answered the Lord in assent. The Lord spoke thus, Monks, before my awakening, while I was the Bodhisattva, not fully awakened, this occurred to me, suppose that I should fare along with a twofold thought. So, monks, whatever is thought of sense pleasures and whatever is thought of malevolence and whatever is thought of harming, that I made into one part, and whatever is thought of renunciation and whatever is thought of non-malevolence and whatever is thought of non-harming, that I made into the other part. While I, monks, was faring on thus, diligent, ardent, self-resolute, thought of sense pleasures arose, and I comprehended thus, this thought of sense pleasures has arisen in me, but it conduces to self-hurt and it conduces to the hurt of others and it conduces to the hurt of both, it is destructive of intuitive wisdom, associated with distress, not conducive to nibbana. But while I was reflecting, it conduces to self-hurt it subsided, and while I was reflecting, it conduces to the hurt of others it subsided, and while I was reflecting, it is destructive of intuitive wisdom, it is associated with distress, it is not conducive to nibbana it subsided. So I, monks, kept on getting rid of the thought of sense pleasures as it constantly arose. I kept on driving it out. I kept on making an end of it. While I, monks, was faring on thus, diligent, ardent, self-resolute, thought of malevolence arose, thought of harming arose, and I comprehended thus, this thought of malevolence, of harming has arisen in me, but it conduces to self-hurt, not conducive to nibbana. But while I was reflecting, it conduces to self. Hurt, while I was reflecting, it is, not conducive to nibbana it subsided. So I, monks, kept on getting rid of the thought of harming as it constantly arose. I kept on driving it out. I kept on making an end of it. Monks, according to whatever a monk ponders and reflects on much his mind in consequence gets a bias that way. Monks, if a monk ponder and reflect much on thought of sense pleasures he ejects thought of renunciation, if he makes much of the thought of sense pleasures, his mind inclines to the thought of sense pleasures. Monks. If a monk ponder and reflect much on the thought of malevolence, on the thought of harming, he ejects the thought of non-harming, if he makes much of the thought of harming, his mind inclines to the thought of harming. Monks, it is as if in the last month of the rains, in the autumn when the corn is thick, a cowherd might be looking after the cows, and might hit them above and below with a stick, and might restrain and check them. What is the reason for this? Monks, that cowherd sees death or imprisonment or degradation from that source. Even so did I, monks, see the peril in unskilled states of mind, the vanity, the defilement, and the advantage, allied to cleansing, in renouncing them for skilled states of mind. While I, monks, was faring on, diligent, ardent, self-resolute, thought of renunciation arose and I comprehended thus, this thought of renunciation has arisen in me, and it conduces neither to self-hurt nor does it conduce to the hurt of others nor does it conduce to the hurt of both, it is for growth in intuitive wisdom, it is not associated with distress, it is conducive to nibbana. If during the night, monks, I should ponder and reflect upon this, not from that source do I behold fear, and if during the day, monks, I should ponder and reflect upon this, not from that source do I behold fear, and if during the night and day, monks, I should ponder and reflect upon this, not from that source do I behold fear. But I thought that after pondering and reflecting too long my body would be weary, if the body was weary the mind would be disturbed, if the mind is disturbed it is a mind far from concentration. So I monks, subjectively steadied the mind. I calmed it. I made it one-pointed. I concentrated. What was the reason for this? 
I thought, do not let my mind be disturbed. While I, monks, was faring on diligent, ardent, self-resolute, thought of non-malevolence, thought of non-harming arose, and I comprehended thus, this thought of non-malevolence, or non-harming has arisen in me, and it conduces neither to self-hurt nor does it conduce to the hurt of others nor does it conduce to the hurt of both, it is for growth in intuitive wisdom, it is not associated with distress, it is conducive to nibbana. If, during the night, monks, not from that source do I behold fear. But I thought that after pondering and reflecting too long my body would be weary, if the body was weary the mind would be disturbed, if the mind is disturbed, it is a mind far from concentration. So I, monks subjectively steadied the mind. I calmed it. I made it one-pointed. I concentrated. What was the reason for this? I thought, do not let my mind be disturbed. Monks, according to whatever a monk ponders and reflects on much his mind in consequence gets a bias that way. Monks, if a monk ponder and reflect much on thought of renunciation he ejects thought of sense pleasures, if he makes much of the thought of renunciation, his mind inclines to the thought of renunciation. Monks, if a monk ponder and reflect much on the thought of non-malevolence, of non-harming, he ejects thought of harming. If he makes much of the thought of non-harming his mind inclines to the thought of non-harming. Monks, it is as if in the last month of the hot weather when all the corn is stored at the confines of a village a cowherd might be looking after the cows, while he is at the root of a tree or in the open he remembers there is something to be done, and thinks, those are the cows. Even so, monks, remembering there is something to be done, did I think, those are mental states. Monks, unsluggish energy was stirred up in me, unmuddled mindfulness was set up, the body was tranquil, impassable, the mind composed, one-pointed. Then I, monks, aloof from pleasures of the senses, aloof from unskilled states of mind, entered into and abided in the first meditation which is accompanied by initial thought and discursive thought, is born of aloofness, and is rapturous and joyful. By allaying initial and discursive thought, with the mind subjectively tranquilist and fixed on one point, I entered into and abided in the second meditation which is devoid of initial and discursive thought, is born of concentration, and is rapturous and joyful. By the fading out of rapture, I dwelt with equanimity, attentive, and clearly conscious, and I experienced in my person that joy of which the Aryans say, joyful lives he who has equanimity and is mindful and I entered into and abided in the third meditation. By getting rid of joy, by getting rid of anguish, by the going down of my former pleasures and sorrows, I entered into and abided in the fourth meditation which has neither anguish nor joy, and which is entirely purified by equanimity and mindfulness. Thus with the mind composed, quite purified, quite clarified, without blemish, without defilement, grown soft and workable, fixed, immovable, I directed my mind to the knowledge and recollection of former habitations, I remembered a variety of former habitations, thus, one birth, two births, three, four, five, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, a hundred, a thousand, a hundred thousand births, and many an eon of integration and many an eon of disintegration and many an eon of integration disintegration, such a one was I by name, having such and such a clan, such and such a color, so was I nourished, such and such pleasant and painful experiences were mine, so did the span of life end. Passing from this, I came to be in another state where such a one was I by name, having such and such a clan, such and such a color, so was I nourished, such and such pleasant and painful experiences were mine, so did the span of life end. Passing from this, I arose here. Thus I remember divers former habitations in all their modes and detail. This, monks, was the first knowledge attained by me in the first watch of the night, ignorance was dispelled, knowledge arose, darkness was dispelled, light arose, even as I abided diligent, ardent, self-resolute. Then with the mind composed, quite purified, 
quite clarified, without blemish, without defilement, grown soft and workable, fixed, immovable, I directed my mind to the knowledge of the passing hence and the arising of beings. With the purified Deva vision surpassing that of men I see beings as they pass hence or come to be, I comprehend that beings are mean, excellent, comely, ugly, well-going, ill-going, according to the consequences of their deeds, and I think, indeed these worthy beings who were possessed of wrong conduct in body, who were possessed of wrong conduct of speech, who were possessed of wrong conduct of thought, scoffers at the Aryans, holding a wrong view, incurring deeds consequent on a wrong view, these, at the breaking up of the body after dying, have arisen in a sorrowful state, a bad born, the abyss, Nareya hell. But these worthy beings who were possessed of good conduct in body, who were possessed of good conduct in speech, who were possessed of good conduct in thought, who did not scoff at the Aryans, holding a right view, incurring deeds consequent on a right view, these, at the breaking up of the body after dying have arisen in a good born, a heaven world. Thus with the purified Deva vision surpassing that of men do I see beings as they pass hence, as they arise, I comprehend that beings are mean, excellent, comely, ugly, well-going, ill-going according to the consequences of their deeds. This, monks, was the second knowledge attained by me in the middle watch of the night, ignorance was dispelled, knowledge arose, darkness was dispelled, light arose, even as I abided diligent, ardent, self-resolute. Then with the mind composed, quite purified, quite clarified, without blemish, without defilement, grown soft and workable, fixed, immovable, I directed my mind to the knowledge of the destruction of the cankers. I understood as it really is, this is anguish, this is the arising of anguish, this is the stopping of anguish, this is the course leading to the stopping of anguish. I understood as it really is, these are the cankers, this is the arising of the cankers, this is the stopping of the cankers, this is the course leading to the stopping of the cankers. Knowing this thus, seeing thus, my mind was freed from the canker of sense pleasures, and my mind was freed from the canker of becoming, and my mind was freed from the canker of ignorance. In freedom the knowledge came to be, I am freed, and I comprehended, destroyed is birth, brought to a close is the Brahma faring, done is what was to be done, there is no more of being such or such. This, monks, was the third knowledge attained by me in the last watch of the night, ignorance was dispelled, knowledge arose, Darkness was dispelled, light arose even as I abided diligent, ardent, self-resolute. Monks, as there might be a large piece of low-lying marshy ground in a forest grove, near which might live a large herd of deer, towards which some man might come along, not desiring their good, not desiring their will, not desiring their security from bonds, if there were a road that was secure, safe, leading to rapture, he might block that road might open up a treacherous road, might place a decoy and might tether a female decoy as a lure, even so, monks, after a time that great herd of deer might come to calamity and dwindle away. But, monks, if some man came along towards that great herd of deer, desiring their good, desiring their will, desiring their security from bonds, and if there were a road that was secure, safe, leading to rapture, he might open up that road, he might block the treacherous road, he would disturb the male decoy, he would let loose the female lure, thus, monks, after a time that great herd of deer would come to growth, expansion, maturity. Monks, this parable has been made by me for illustrating the meaning and this is the meaning here, the large piece of low-lying marshy ground monks, this is a synonym for sense pleasures. The great herd of deer monks, this is a synonym for beings. The man not desiring their good, not desiring their will, not desiring their security from bonds monks, this is a synonym for Mara, the evil one. The treacherous way monks, this is a synonym for the eightfold wrong way, that is to say, wrong view, wrong thought, wrong speech, wrong action, wrong way of living, wrong endeavor, wrong mindfulness, 
wrong concentration. The male decoy monks, this is a synonym for the passion of delight. The female lure monks, this is a synonym for ignorance. The man desiring good, desiring will, desiring security from the bonds monks, this is a synonym for the Tathagata, perfected one, fully self-awakened one. The way that is secure, safe, leading to rapture monks, this is a synonym for the Aryan Eightfold Way, that is to say, right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right way of living, right endeavor, right mindfulness, right concentration. Thus is the secure, safe way leading to rapture opened by me, monks, the treacherous way blocked, the decoy disturbed, the lure let loose. Whatever, monks, is to be done from compassion by a teacher seeking the welfare of his disciples, that has been done by me out of compassion for you. These, monks, are the roots of trees, these are empty places. Meditate, monks, do not be slothful, be not remorseful later. This is our instruction to you. Thus spoke the Lord. Delighted, these monks rejoiced in what the Lord had said. Discord.